Hello, Aaron. Hello. It's been a pleasure. Well, tell us a little bit about the venue itself. We're sitting just, what, what is this area that we're sitting in? There? Yeah, so this area is just a, a, a loft area that's um, been renovated. Um, Nick and his partner, Peter, have been doing mainly weddings and um, special events here uh, for the past year and a half to two years. And so I've recently partnered with them to do the music side of things. So that's um, what's coming together tonight is um, the introduction of live music and performance to the to the space. So, okay, nice. Yeah. So, so, so this is your this is your launch site, effectively. This is the the soft launch. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll be doing a, a, another official launch once we get the um, the planning permission from the, the local planning uh, body and that kind of thing. So it's just really. Um, a soft launch to to test it out to see you know what works what doesn't um, to get feedback from people to try out the, the food and, and that kind of thing and then officially launch later in the year. Okay, but you've um, you've invited <coughs> Kelsey to come and perform as well. Yes. How did that come about? How did that uh, relationship or arrangement come about? Yeah. So there is. Um, a gentleman down in London, um, Wayne Bukhar uh, is his name, that had Kelsey, featured Kelsey on his radio show. And I happened to see, uh, to catch the show, and uh, made contact with Kelsey. Um, told me that I was uh, in the process of, of opening uh, this place here. And, um, just through the conversation, we arranged for him to, to come over and, and play. He, this is his debut in the UK. He's not been here before, so he wanted to come and, and do a, a performance. And the timing just happened to be right. So, so and if it's the real connections in America, because obviously you're American. Yeah. He's American. Yeah. So that's that's down to your connections that made it possible. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So obviously, I imagine at some point you're gonna have to. Don't get me wrong. We're we're very excited to see any. Often from America, here, yeah. <laughs> performing here or any time, anywhere in, in the UK. You love American artists, mm, but absolutely. you're going to be obviously looking at British artists as well. Absolutely, yeah, there'll be British artists yeah. as well as American artists, um, yeah. local yeah. artists as well as established artists as well. Um, so it'll, it'll be a, a mixture of, of, of genres and artists and, and that kind of thing. So, so you're interested in like new emergent acts, independent acts, not always majorly signed artists. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So a, a variety. I, I think that's that's definitely the, the key and something that I, I want to um, to foster here at, at the venue. I think that's important. Um, there were a lot of people that helped me in my music career that gave me a platform or opened a door or exposed me to someone or connected me to someone. So it's it's important that you know I do the same. Well, you know what I see. You know, in terms of venues, I've not formed in a venue like this. Uh -huh. It's pretty splendid. That's yeah. one of the words we use in the UK. It's splendid. Splendid. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. it's a, <laughs> yeah. No, it's a it's a great setting. Um, obviously, we get a lot of footage of it anyway. So it's a, yeah. it's, it's a barn. When, right. when this when did this when was this built? It was built in 1530. Oh. Um, it was one of the properties of Bess of Hardwick. It was one of her properties, um, and the, the Chatsworth house. That connection. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. hmm. And then it, it passed to different you know, families mm -hmm. um, down the, the generations. So. Old money. Old money. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Old yeah. Money. <laughs> so you made some good friends. You made some good friends. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but a lot of yeah. that is down again down to the, your again to you being an artist. Yeah. What you've done your connections naturally are going to be, you know, the greatest ilk that we can actually afford in the UK. When you think about the eighties, what comes to mind? The eighties. For me, personally in the 80s, it was I was into punk, uh, the punk scene during that time, ironically. So it was, um, that's what uh, the 80s is, is for me. Um, it was the time that I was in high school as well, so um, it reminds me of that. Um, I went into the military, uh, so it was during that time that I, I went into the, the military in 86. And, um, so that's is a combination of all of those things, just really trying to find my way. I was, uh, 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 in 84, I was 17, so it was, uh, you know, being a, a teenager in the, in the 80s and, and growing up during that, that, that time. What do you do to punk music? I think that the UK, to be honest, it was something, you know, uh, different. I, I, I 
when I say punk, I, I, I that I might have misrepresented myself. So I'm thinking more uh, like Depeche Mode and, mm, and cool. oh, you know that that yeah, kind yeah, of uh, really punk, yeah. no, it's not yeah, really punk. Course, is it? Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, that, so, that it's like soft pop, that really soft mm. pop. More UK, our mm. soft cell, uh, mm. you know. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Eurythmics. Yeah. Well, Erasure. Erasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was mm. more into that kind mm. of. But Morrissey. You, mm. Exactly. So yeah, that what was, was it about my, Morrissey? Was that was about the movie? What kind of drew you to? The music? I don't. I I, I don't mm. know. I think it's just something something different, there, something yeah. different that you know we weren't hearing in the mm. in the US from the, the US artist and. Mm. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what drew me to it, but uh, it, it resonated with me for whatever reason, and, and that's uh, what I, I listened to a, a lot of during the 80s anyway. So. Well, it's a great sound. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's hard to miss that period. Even now, yeah. I think a lot of people are going back and looking at the 80s music and looking yeah. at what's going on, because it was, in itself, it had such a, it was such a broad type of sound. It was like, you know, you had the keyboards, we had so many yeah. bands, Duran Duran, everyone's playing right. a ballet. Exactly. It was unique. It was fascinating, you know, in terms of how unique it was compared to what we see today. It was, it was, and I think that's what what drew me you know, mm. to it. Yeah, being a, a coming from small town, you know, Kansas, um, it was just a, a different sound than than what I was hearing, you know, there. So. Okay, great. Yeah. So by the '80s, the world of music was still enjoying the devotion of fans. You had the Beatles and Elvis in the '60s, Bob Marley and Led Zeppelin in the '70s. Then came the 80s with the explosion of Prince and Michael Jackson and bands like Imagination in the UK. Yeah. What were the 90s like and who were the standout figures in music for you? Mm. I think during that time I had, um, after I got out of the military and, and moved to Minneapolis, it was all about the, the Minneapolis sound for me. So it was uh, Prince, it was you know, Mint Condition, it was Sounds of Blackness, it was Janet Jackson, it was uh, uh, Morris, you know, the time, it was uh, all of those, Alexander O'Neill, it was that whole thing for me um, growing up, because I was, you know, living there at that time, so that's um, kind of what um, was in my, you know, in my face and, and what I was involved with and listening to. Also jazz, you know, which is my, uh, my first love. Um, so I, I always have to to go back to to that, mm -hmm. um, but that's what was happening for me in the in the nineties. Have you anything to say to me? Won't you? Not really. Mm. No, I, I didn't really get into the, the, the hip hop scene during that, that time period. Mm. Um, that didn't come until later for me. Mm. But uh, with you know with folks like Common and, and uh, you know, the Soul Aquariums and Roots and that that's more of my um, style of, of hip hop. Conscious hip hop is, is what. Yeah, I'm, I'm into. Do you know why I asked? Because obviously it was about kind of understanding why you went into singing as opposed to, you know, rapping. Like a lot of people in America, yeah. black artists tend yeah. to go towards the, you know, not yeah. tend to, but it's, it's, yeah. in America you've got much, far more scope, far right. more choice. Right. You know, whereas in the UK right now it's very much everything's leaning towards hip hop and rap, things yeah. like that. Yeah. So I just wanted to understand a little bit what made you want to sing. Because like, yeah. What made you want to sing anyway? 
I think my, my family was very, very musical. Uh, my, my, my father's family. Um, they had a, a, a group back in the 20s and 30s called the Silver Voice Quartet. Um, and so they were more of a, a vaudeville during the time of vaudeville, and, and they traveled around the Midwest and, and sang. Um, so it, it was just in my, you know, in my, my bones, in my DNA. blood, so to speak. Yeah, in my DNA. Um, and then growing up in the black church, of course, that, you know, you um, uh, absorb that that the black church music and you know that that uh, becomes a part of you and, and your history and your your narrative and your story um, and so that that definitely had an influence you know on my life but um, the the arts in general I think was something that I that just resonated with me singing dancing acting you know all of that um, uh, so that's what I was you know, drawn to, but I, I, I think it, it initially it was definitely a, a family um, connection or family influence uh, as to what I, I wanted to say. You never looked back in terms of that. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I from a child, you know, on, I, I, I've always uh, uh, was a singer, a dancer, um, acting. Those were the, the things that I've, that I've always been involved in since a child. Um, yeah, I, I just just love it. Just anything love it. you've uh, acted in that we might know about? No, not anything major. Uh, more musical theater um, has has been my uh, my my lane. Any uh, characters that you performed or played that you might want to disclose of us? Uh, Nick Bottom. Uh, I was Nick Bottom in, in a, a show, a, a Shakespeare uh, Ooh, okay. play. Yeah. What about Othello? Never. I didn't do Othello. Oh, no, I know. Mm. No. Oh, you know, what a play. I know, right? Mm. A lot of story. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I unfortunately I didn't do that one. Yeah, just more more. So maybe music one day theater. in the future, maybe. Yeah, future. maybe, who knows? Who knows, Mark Anthony? Yeah, well, maybe someone right now, you look like a great fellow from what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, what I'm standing here. You know, okay, okay, thank no, you. No, I'll come and watch you. Definitely. Thank you. The Sounds of Blackness is an interesting history, yeah. which spans several decades. Yeah. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it, it, it uh, started out in a, a college called McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, so it started out as a, just a, a, a group of singers. Um, evolved from that. Um, what, you, what, what, what decade are we talking about? So we're talking about the, the 70s. Uh, yeah, it was when uh, when they first started you know, singing and together and forming. Um, and then in the 80s was when um, Janet Jackson and Terry Lewis um, brought them into their camp. Um, Terry and, uh, and Jimmy Jam uh, produced, you know, their al produced the albums. Um, the group uh, ended up winning three Grammys, and then going on working with various uh, artists in the in the field, and Elton John and Stevie Wonder and you know, Prince and Janet and a bunch of folks. Um, the group is still still growing strong, still uh, performing. Um, and that's yeah, that, that's kind of the, the history of, of the, legacy, isn't it? the sounds. Yeah, it is a bit of a legacy. It is a bit of a legacy. It's been it's been going for for quite a while now. Yeah. Well, so you're a fully fledged member of the iconic sounds of Blackness. Yeah. What was it like being part of this group, and what was your role? It was literally a dream come true. Um, I had a, a, a really um, strong connection with the, the Sounds of Blackness uh, prior to becoming a member. Um, I was at a place in my life where I was um, very um, depressed and suicidal um, and literally was lying in bed um, planning my suicide for the next day. Um, optimistic came on the radio, a little radio that I had by my, uh, by my bed. Um, and it was the first time that I'd ever heard that song. Uh, and it, it was, basically I had a, a spiritual experience with the song. Um, that took me, uh, that prevented me from carrying out um, my suicide. So um, I immediately went out and, and bought uh, the, the, the CD and learned about the group. Uh, ended up moving to Minneapolis. Um, 
circumstance happened uh, with my with my singing um, that I was introduced to Gary, the the musical director for the sounds, um, invited to audition and um, became a, a member of the Sounds of Blackness as a, a singer. Um, and yeah, so the first time that I sang Optimistic as a member of the group, um, I. To be honest with you, I could barely get through the song. I was just, you know, tears were streaming. If, if I would have ended my life, that it, it wouldn't have happened. So um, I actually have the the lyrics of the words tattooed across my chest um, to remind myself, um, you know, you can win as long as you keep your head to the sky. Is what I have tattooed, which is the one of the verses from Optimistic. Um, that's a strong message to anyone feeling in that, you know, ever feeling themselves in that situation. Yeah. yeah. To understand it is absolutely an opportunity to, to get beyond it. Obviously, you were lucky to have some intervention there. Yeah. However, that came about. Yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. a great message. It was an intervention. I like your, your mm. word. That's exactly what it was. It was a spiritual intervention that happened um, that, that night. Um, yeah. Oh, well, we're, well, we're happy that you're here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, that's a big story, and obviously, anyone listening now is going to obviously understand and appreciate you, you, you sharing that with us. Because, mm. you know, how many people will share that? Yeah, you know, with the audience. So, yeah, it's it's an important aspect, um, and an important thing to put out there. When I when I met Anne Nesby, who was the the lead vocalist for the, the group for years, um, who was the main vocalist on that song. Um, again, I just you know a big bear hug and tears and. Um, because that, that song literally saved my life. Literally um, saved my life. So. I've heard people talk about music saving their lives. And yeah, it did. I, and I understand, like, I know in terms of relationships, you find, like, if you're, you know, you're going through a really difficult time, you go to a song and it yeah. can uplift you. And you're like, yeah. you know what? Or, you know, or you're kind of like, you're missing somebody, you need to kind of, you, you know, you remember them for a song. So right. it has such a, so many incredible emotional connections with people, music. Yeah, sure, I it get does. that. Yeah. But never heard what you've said there. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. very interesting. I get that though. Yeah. yeah. Special. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome.